70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to the place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expect end. Then shall ye call unto me, and ye shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us all that we need to help us to deal with the pandemic. As we celebrate Black History Month, you have allowed us to celebrate more history. A vaccine being provided to help us with the COVID-19 crisis, saving lives during the pandemic. 
given us hope as you gave many of our ancestors years ago. Hope, helping us prayer endlessly. We say thank you for all your many wonderful blessings. We thank you for another Sunday that we get ready to worship and praise your word. And you are the almighty wonderful God. You have my prayers to be served. That's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
what you want to be, if you try to be what you can be. Hey, Black Chad, do you know where you're going? Are you really going? Do you know you can learn what you want to learn? Do you try to learn what you can learn? Hey, Black Child, do you know you are strong? I mean, really strong? Do you know you can do what you want to do? If you try to do what you can do? Hey, Black Child, be what you must be. Learn what you must learn. Do what you must do. And tomorrow your nation will be what you want it to be. History gives us the ability to remember significant past events that have shaped the world we live in. This is why every year the month of February is designated as Black History Month. In 1926, Carter G. Wilson initiated Black History Month to raise awareness and acknowledge the accomplishments and influential experience of Black men and women. Black history helps us to better understand God, to comprehend His plan for humanity, and to see evidence of His deliverance love and blessings. It helps us to remain mindful of our past, thankful for our present, and hopeful for our future. We welcome you to our virtual Black History program and hope you enjoy. I am mindful of Dr. May Carol Jennison, born on October 17, 1956. Dr. Jennison is an American engineer, physician, and former NASA, NASA astronaut. She became the first African-American woman to travel into space when she served as a mission specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor. Jemison joined NASA's Astronaut Corps in 1987 and was selected to serve for the STS-47 mission during which she orbited the Earth for nearly eight days on September 12th through the 20th. 1992. She was not only the first female African-American astronaut to have traveled to space, but also the first female African-American to be admitted to the astronaut training program. Dr. Jennison is still inspiring and encouraging young people to pursue careers in science and medicine. I am mindful of Dr. Daniel L. Williams III, born January 18, 1856. Dr. Williams was an African-American surgeon who was known for performing one of the world's first su successful open-heart surgeries and for, and for the first Black-owned and controlled hospitals in the nation. He set very high standards in the medical procedures and sanitary conditions. He, he adopted sterilization with at the time of the newly discovered procedure to prevent germ transformation and infections. He made history again in 1913 when he became the first black member of the exclusive America, America, American College of Surgeons. Let, let us always remember to Dr. Daniel L. Williams and be thankful for his work. I am mindful of Gwendolyn Elizabeth Brooks, born June 7, 1917. Miss Brooks was a pioneering poet who captured the joys and pains of African American experience in her work. In 1950, Miss Brooks won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry for her book Annie Allen, becoming the first black person to do so. Her collection of work featured tales of ordinary African Americans trying to work, live, and survive despite oppression, war, and poverty. Gwendolyn Brooks inspired hope for African-American writers and paved the way for them to pursue their dreams. I am mindful of Jackie Robinson born January 31st, 1990. After high school, Robinson attended UCLA and became the first athlete to win varsity letters in four sports, baseball, basketball, football, and track. In 1947, he became the first black man to enter the Major League Baseball in America. He was given a very big responsibility to make all people see the game of baseball in an entirely different way. In 1962, Robinson was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. His Brooklyn Dodgers jersey no number, number 42, is the only number retired in Major League baseball history.
He won many awards and paved the way for many great baseball players today, even you. I am mindful of Shirley Anita Chisholm, born November 30th, 1924. In 1965, Shirley Chisholm, a former preschool teacher, won a landslide victory to gain a seat in the New York State Assembly. She became the second African American in the New York State House. She served for three years. In 1968, Chisholm became the first African American woman elected to the United States House of Representatives. In 1971, Chisholm was the co-founder of the Congressional Black Caucus, an organization representing the black members of the U.S. Congress. Chisholm was also a founder member of the National Women's Political Caucus, an organization dedicated to recruiting, training, and supporting women who seek elected and appointed offices at all levels of government. During the 1972 presidential election, Chisholm became the first African-American candidate to seek the nomination for president of the United States for a major political party. She also became the first woman to run for the Democratic Party's presidential nomination. In 1983, Chisholm retired from Congress after serving 18 years and resumed her career in education. In 2005, Chisholm passed away, but her legacy lives on. In 2015, President Barack Obama awarded Shirley Chisholm the Presidential Medal of Freedom, our nation's highest honor given to civilians. Shirley Chisholm paved the way for African-American politicians, such as former President Barack Obama and current Vice President Kamala Harris. Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Lord, today I come to you full of thanks. I'm thankful all you have done to advance people of color. Help us to remember the legacies of those who came before us who not only paved the road, but carried their boots upon their broken backs to build the road. I'm thankful for Rosa, Martin, Malcolm, Obama, and Kamala. I'm thankful for the struggle that my people endured because it made us stronger and resilient. I am thankful for the old church, the morning bench, the Dr. Watts hymns, the praying deacons, and the humming preachers that introduced our ancestors to Christ. We are thankful for the presence which you are still standing on. Lord, when it's too hard living, help us remember that you are the great I am, the source of our strength, and the purpose for each day. Lord, Help us realize that black history is all about history. Let us forever be thankful for the, our past and embrace our future. In Jesus' name we pray and praise. Amen. Good morning. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, that who has brought us thus far on the way, that who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. In three months, I will graduate high school and I have the freedom to go to the school of my choice. Just a few generations before, my great-great and great-grandparents didn't have so many choices and freedoms. But today, I thank God for their weary years and their silent tears. And by God's grace, he has brought us thus far on the way. After high school, I am able to attend any school of my choosing because of my ancestors. I am grateful that they did like Galatians 6 and 9 tells us. They didn't get weary and well-doing. And now, in this due season, I can reap because they did not faint. I am blessed that they believe in 1 Peter 2 and 9, which says we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. I stand here today as an honor student with pride and gratitude. It is because of so many of my ancestors, community members, church members, and the village of people who helped guide and protect me. I can plan with very little fear to go to college and major in any path I choose. The options are so limitless. I haven't nailed down a choice, but my top choices are currently Grambling and Jackson State University, majoring in criminal justice. If not for the past, I would be unable to dream of such a bright future. For that, I will forever give God the honor and praise. Please bow your heads and join me in a prayer of thanksgiving for the present. Dear Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations as we celebrate black history and reflect on our journey of freedom, courage, hope, and victory, we celebrate you and your hand of grace upon us. It is by your amazing grace 
that presently we are able to attend any school we want, work jobs that those before us only dreamed of, and even live what we want. We thank you, dear God, for the gift of the present and ask that you continue to be with us and guide us as we carry on into the future. Give us more love for all, more faith, courage, and peace. Help us to do things that are pleasing to you and that will help those who come after us even farther. It is in our, our holy name we pray. Amen. My hope for the future is to go to school to become a lawyer. I am inspired by greats such as Justice Thurgood Marshall and my mother, Attorney Felice Dowd Wicks. Through the grace of God, I hope to play a role in reforming the criminal justice system. Hello, my name is Lacey Buchanan, and my hope for the future is equality for all people. When I grow up, I would like to be a physical therapist so that I can help people through injuries. Hello, my name is Anaya Bailey. My hope for the future is to have my own practice. I would like to be a doctor so I can help find a cure for cancer. My hope for the future is to become an architect. I am inspired by such greats as Moses McKissick, whose architecture firm helped to design the Smithsonian African American Museum in Washington, DC. Likewise, with the help of God, I plan to inspire more African American women to consider this career path. My name is Amaria Bailey. I hope for the future to become a professional athlete so I get back to Mississippi. My hope for the future is to become a psychologist so that I can help those who are struggling in order for them to have a productive future. My hope for the future is that we can finally say all men are treated equal, no matter the color of their skin, nationality, religion, or gender. What I want to do in the future is to be involved in an organization that shows the younger generation it's okay to speak up and use your voice against things that are wrong. Let us pray. Lord, I come to you right now just to say thank you. Thank you for the things that you have done for us and thank you for the things that you will do for us. Lord, I just pray that you will be there with President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris as they make decisions for the United States. Lord, and I pray that this coronavirus pandemic will get better and that we can go back to living our normal lives. Lord, and I pray for lost souls, people who don't know you. I pray that one day they will know you and live a better life. Lord, just thank you for all the things that you have done for us and all the things that you will do for us, Lord. And just thank you for letting us see another day. And it is in your daughter's son, Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning to Pastor John Wicks, to the committee members of this amazing program and to the congregation. Thank you so much for the invitation. My name is Pamela DC Jr. and I am the director of the two Mississippi museums located here in Jackson, Mississippi. If you would allow me just to sing this song that means so much to me and meant so much to the Freedom Riders that were here at Mount Nebo Baptist Church. The song goes like, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around, turn me around, turn me around, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. I'm gonna keep on a walking, keep on a talking, marching up to Freedom Land before the freedom riders of the civil rights movement would march through the streets of Jackson. They would meet at different churches in the community. One of those holy vessels, Mount Nebo Missionary Baptist Church. They would sing songs of encouragement. They would sing songs that would lessen their feelings of fear. They would sing songs that would give them a sense of hope. They needed to believe that there was a better way to live, to not be treated as subhumans, as, but to be treated as men and women, as Americans. These songs gave them that feeling that they were invincible. They knew that once outside the boundaries of the church house, 
once they were out in the openness, out on the streets of Jackson, strategically marching down Lynch Street or downtown Jackson, the police officers would be waiting on them with billy clubs, with water hoses and dogs, because it was unlawful to march, to congregate for a cause, and that cause was freedom. Even if they were being beaten, they would still hear these songs in their heads. Some would continue to sing even as they were being hauled off to jail. They needed these songs to believe that change may not come for them, but for children that would come after them. And they also knew God's words. Isaiah 43, 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. They knew God. They knew God was with them all the way. And the songs, those beautiful songs of the movement, kept them going. What are the songs of your generation today? What words, what quotes keep you moving? What gives you hope? You know, I can remember a song that made me feel like there was no stopping me from being whatever I wanted to be. The song is by McFadden, McFadden and Whitehead. Truly before your time, but the words still permeate in my ears. The words were, ain't no stopping us now. We're on the move. And I believe that I could do anything when I heard that song. I was unstoppable. Our hopes of yesterday are gone. Emmett Till, Martin Luther King, Megil Wiley Evers, Fannie Lou Hamer, Jimmy Travis, Owen Brooks, Dolores Ory, who was a member of Mount Nebo Baptist Church, and so many others who fought for all of us. We cannot allow for their dreams for us to be deferred. And they won't be because you are our crowning glory, the youth of Mount Nebo Baptist Church. Our dreams won't be deferred because we look at you the hope and the dreams of the slave. We look to you. We look to you to continue to fight for justice. We look to you. We look to you to hold your heads high always. We look to you to build up your community. We look to you to help the homeless and the poverty stricken. We look to you to love your neighbors. We look to you to create a better world for all mankind. We look to you to know that you are the greatest of all times. You know, the young folks, y'all call it GOAT, but I'm going to say the greatest of all times. Truly, the hope and dreams of our ancestors. You, total freedom, we look to you. You beautiful youth of Mount Nebo. Missionary Baptist Church. Remember, freedom, the ultimate joy for you, for all of us. You, there is hope. Yes, there is hope. And that hope, when I envision hope, when I envision faith, when I envision strength, integrity, I look to you. You know, there's an old freedom song that they sung, and yeah, they called me the old singing woman. And that song goes, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, over me, over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Thank you so much. Children are crying. 
us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. O gracious master, we come once again to say thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and supplying all of our needs. Oh God, we thank you. It is another day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, and we will thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood that was shed. Thank you that he rose again with all power in his hand. Oh God, we are, we are so very thankful for this another opportunity to say a word about you. We ask that you would forgive us of all of our shortcomings. Help us to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Oh God, speak through us and speak to us. And when you bless us, we will be so very careful to give you all of the glory. It is in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ we do pray. Amen. Giving all praise and glory to God Almighty, the maker and creator of the marvelous and magnificent heavens and earth. We are so very grateful to once again uh, celebrate our rich history from Africa to America, from Nigeria to New York, from Cameroon and the Congo to the Carolinas, from Ivory Coast to the Gulf Coast to Tanzania to Louisiana, from Malawi to Mississippi, from kings to presidents, from queens to vice presidents, from warriors to freedom fighters, God has brought us and God has blessed us and God has endowed us with greatness. We thank God for all of our program participants. We appreciate uh, Sister Pamela Jr. taking out time to come and share with us. We appreciate all that she does in leadership of our, of Mississippi's fantastic two museums, the Civil Rights Museum and the Museum of Mississippi History. As always, we are uh, extremely grateful as well for, for our technical gurus who come together and work together to make our live stream recording possible. Today we especially thank God for uh, our young people leading devotion, leading uh, the song service, submitting video clips that inspire us in regards to our history, but also inspiring us by showing us that we indeed have a bright future. They are well on their way to doing great things and they personify, watch this, they personify, watch this, our black history theme today. They personify our black history theme, mindful of our past, thankful for our present, and hopeful for our future. Well, I won't be long today. Um, uh, I have a really, really short text, but before I get to that, before I get to that, I need to say this. Friends, I am blessed, and I submit to you, we are blessed for a multitude of reasons. If we are indeed mindful of our past, thankful for our present, and hopeful for our future, if we're there, we could answer a question today. We want to answer this question, number one, what should we do? Oh yeah, what should we do? If we're mindful of our past, thankful for our present, and hopeful for our future, what should we do? Well, first of all, let us continue to study God. Let's continue to study God. Surely somebody out there knows he's worthy of our study. Second Timothy 2.15 says, study 
to show thyself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. Oh, bless his holy name. Study his word, and he'll bless your life. Martin Luther said, the Bible is the cradle wherein Christ is laid. Reverend Charles H. Spurgeon said, a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Amen. I need to press rewind right there. A Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to someone who isn't. Uh, and then uh, someone else said, first, open your heart, then open your Bible. It won't do you much good to hear it or read it if you refuse to receive it. If we are mindful of our past, thankful for our present and hopeful for our future, then we must study God. And then secondly, let us continue to serve God. How many of you know he's worthy of our service? In Mark chapter 9, Jesus perceived along a journey that the disciples had argued about which of them was greatest. He wasn't within earshot, but God knows everything. He is an omniscient God. He knew what they were talking about. They were arguing, who is, who's the greatest? Is it Peter? Is it John? Is it James? Who's the greatest? Is it Thomas? Is it Philip? Is it Bartholomew? Which is the greatest? Jesus said in verse 35 of Mark 9, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. If you want to be great, help somebody. If you want to be great, serve somebody. The record is serving man is the greatest way to serve God. Jesus said in Matthew 25 and 40, in so much as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. If you want to do God a favor, do your neighbor a favor, and it's done. If we are mindful of our past, thankful for our present, and hopeful for our future, we must, hallelujah, study God. We must serve God. And number three, we must shout unto God. Oh, yeah. How many know he's worthy of a shout? They used to say in a popular commercial that when you need to clean your shirt collar, you can purchase a certain cleaning agent called shout and you can apply it to the collar and what you know it shout it out in case you had a tough couple of weeks with plenty of ice and plenty of snow but no water in case you had a tough month with trouble on every side in case you had a difficult 12 months of pandemic and pandemonium you can shout it out you don't have to permit your problems to get you down you can still shout you can shout right where you are you can shout anywhere anywhere you can shout it out don't tell God how big your storm is tell your storm how big your God is hallelujah and shout Psalm 22 and 3 says God inhabits the praises of Israel no matter what the devil is trying to do no matter what you happen to be going through no matter what is ailing you trying you challenging you and worrying you you can shout it out Psalm 18 and 3 says I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies if you shout well enough for God to hear you your enemies won't have the wherewithal to handle you 
Now watch this. You don't have to shout loud. Hallelujah. It doesn't have to be loud, but it does have to be real. Amen. In Luke 10, Mary had a quiet praise. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus listening. On the other hand, her sister Martha was real loud. In verse 40, Martha said, Jesus, make Mary get up and help me. And Jesus said, what Mary hath chosen is more needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part. You don't have to be loud, but you do have to be real. Mary's worship was real. Our worship must be real. You know what? Down at the cross, hey, where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied come to the fountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete you know what else I am so wondrously saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in Glory, 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 glory to his name. Amen. If we are mindful of our past, thankful for our present, and hopeful for our future, we will continue to study God, serve God, and shout unto God. How many of you know he's worthy? He's worthy every month. I said he's worthy every month. And especially in Black History Month. All we've been in and all we've been through and all we've come out of, we ought to be like the rocks. Jesus referenced in Luke 19 and 40. If nobody else, you know what happened. Uh, the, disciples, uh, the, uh, the disciples were making a ruckus and the Pharisees didn't like all the praise that Jesus was getting. And the Pharisees told Jesus, they said, Jesus, uh, make your disciples hush. And Jesus said, if they hush, hey. Oh, you know what would happen, my friends, if nobody else will praise him, we ought to be like the rocks. We should praise him. If nobody else will magnify him, we should. If no one else will glorify him, we should. If no one else will amplify him, we should. If no one else will lift him, we should. He lifted us out of slavery and brutality. He lifted us out of segregation and Jim Crow. He, uh, just a few months ago, he lifted us out of a Mississippi Confederate flag and he lifted us out of four years of Trumpism. If no one else will lift him up, we should. Oh yeah, in just a few weeks, we will celebrate Another anniversary, I believe it will be the 56th anniversary of the march of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and 3,199 others from Selma, Alabama to the state capital in Montgomery, Alabama the successful march began on March the 21st, 1965. But don't forget the first march, the first march, the uh, you might say unsuccessful march, began two weeks earlier, led by the great Reverend and U.S. Representative John Lewis, Bloody Sunday, 
March the 7th, 1965. On March 7th, our people were beaten, prodded and dragged. Our women were beaten, prodded and dragged. People, uh, preacher, why must we talk about this? Uh, I'm glad you asked. We need to know where we came from. We need to get serious about life and we need to get serious about school. We don't want to go back. We want to go forward. But you need to know where you came from so you can figure out where you need to be going. If we're going for a, a hopeful future, we must be mindful of our past. Dr. King and so many others put their lives on the line for us so we could go to school where we wanted, so we could eat where we wanted, so we could live where we wanted, and watch this, so we could vote when we wanted. America saw in November, and Georgia saw again in January the power of our vote. They lived and died so we could vote. They sacrificed so we wouldn't have to. My friends, a strong man stands up for himself. A stronger man stands up for others. And the strongest man stands up for God. Dr. King said if a man hadn't found a cause to die for, he's not fit to live. With all that in mind, I, I, I have a really, really short text. Uh, I'm not really preaching. I'm just talking. I'm closing. I'm already closing with two short verses. The first verse is Psalm, Psalm 1. Psalm number 1, verse number 3. Psalm number one, verse number three, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Well, I gave you a theme for already gave you our theme for the entire program, but I also brought a subject for the message. If I was preaching today, my subject would be, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Amen, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. Friends, God has brought us too far to turn around now. I am reminded of a lady of a lady in Luke chapter 8 that had an issue and the Bible says she fought her way through the crowd and took her issue to Jesus by grabbing the hem of his garment. My brothers and sisters, in case you haven't noticed, we have some issues. Oh yeah, let me press rewind one more time. I said we have some issues. Education is an issue. Economic development is an issue. The breakdown of the family is an issue. Drugs, violence, the murder rate, and overall moral decay are all issues. Well, Psalm 1 and 3 reminds me of Dr. King and Mega Evers and Rosa Parks and Fannie Lou Hamer. They were like a tree planted by the rivers of water. In other words, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. The older generation did a phenomenal job addressing their issues. The question is, how will we address ours? Well, our second verse, amen, our, watch this, our second verse, and you already know it, already have it memorized, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Uh, I believe it would get us uh, 
off to a good start in addressing our issues. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and will heal the land. If we are mindful of our past, if we are thankful for our present, and if we are hopeful for our future, let's answer another question. Number two, what more should we do? Oh yeah, what more? I'm not preaching today, I'm just talking. What more should we do? What more should we do? Number one, we must humble ourselves. Many of us have made it, but we must understand how we made it. Psalm 103 says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and we are the sheep of what? His pasture. Where we live is his pasture. Where we work is his pasture. Where we worship is his pasture. Where we play is his pasture. Where we vacation, it's his pasture. It all belongs to us. There's no such thing as a self-made Man, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. Not we ourselves. We must humble ourselves and thank God for what he's already done. And then he'll do some more. Hallelujah. Some of you are waiting on today's blessing, but you need to do a better job thanking God for the blessings of yesterday. God has brought us from a mighty, mighty long way. Y'all, I, I cannot, I simply cannot help myself. I have to go back through this. You know I love to go through this. God has, God has brought us from a mighty long way. I can't help it. Y'all forgive me. God has brought us uh, from a mighty long way, uh, from a one-room shack to a brand new Cadillac. God has brought us from the outhouse uh, to the penthouse, uh, from neck bones uh, to T-bones, uh, although I still like the neck bones with gravy. Help me, somebody. God has brought us uh, from a number three tub uh, to a jacuzzi tub. God has brought us uh, from one, count them, one pair of overalls uh, to three walk-in closets. Uh, come on, uh, if you know God has brought us uh, from a mighty long way. And so we must humble ourselves. And then secondly, we must pray and seek his face. In this, in this world, in this world of advanced technology, in this world of iPads and iPhones, Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, texting, and email, we need to send God some more knee mail. Oh yeah, James 5 and 16 says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. How many of you out there know prayer works? How many of you out there have experienced it for yourself that prayer works? Is there anybody out there anywhere that has tried prayer and it works? Somebody said prayer is the key of the day and the lock of the night. Prayer should start things off in the morning and prayer should sh shut things off at night. We must pray and seek his face. We must humble ourselves. We must pray and seek his face. And then thirdly, we must turn, we must turn, 
We must turn. We must turn from our wicked ways. If we want God to turn things around, we must turn some things around. Beloved, it's time out for falling out. Aren't you glad God doesn't hold grudges like we do? Aren't you glad after we make one mistake, God isn't through? We need to go to school and we need to finish school. We need to finish school. We need to go to school. We need to finish school. Then get a job. Then get married and live together and then start a family. Things would be more in order if we did things in the right order. Dr. King and others dealt with the issues of their day. It's time for us to stand up, step up, and deal with ours. Watch this, education and crime are on a seesaw. I said education and crime are on a seesaw. When education goes up, crime goes down. Hallelujah. And the church must get involved. Reverend Dolphus Weary said on page 117 of his book, I Ain't Coming Back, he said no money or time is wasted that is invested in the life of a child. And Frederick Douglass said, it's easier to build stronger children than it is to repair broken men. We've come this far by faith. We can't turn around now. Ain't gonna let nobody Turn me round, ain't gonna let nobody turn me round. I'm gonna keep on a walking, I'm gonna keep on a talking, marching up freedom land. As I get ready to let you go, if we are mindful of our past, thankful for our present, and indeed hopeful for our future. We must answer one more question, number three. Where should we dwell? Where should we dwell? Well, I'm glad you asked. Where should we dwell? Number one, we should stay in school. Amen. Number two, we should stay encouraged. And number three, we should stay in God. To stay there means to live there or always have your mind there. Keep your mind on doing your best in school. Keep your mind on being encouraged. The devil wants to break your spirit. Keep your mind on being encouraged. Be encouraged over in the book of Kings. David took his men out to battle. And while they were out to battle, another enemy army snuck in behind them and kidnapped their wives and children. When David and his army finished their battle and came back home, they discovered that their wives and children were gone. The record is all of David's army blamed him. They say, it's all your fault that our wives and children are gone. It's your fault, David, that you had us out here fighting. Well, David had done what God led him to do. And so David prayed to God and said, God, what should we do? God said, go and take your men and go back and get your wives and children. And that's exactly what happened. But there's something else that happened in that passage. When everybody turned on David, the Bible said David encouraged himself. There will be a time, my friend, when you can't look to another. You can't look to your left or your right. There will be a time where you have to talk to God and encourage yourself. Stay in school. Stay encouraged. And stay in God. Keep your mind on God. And so what was it? 
that empowered MLK? What was it that empowered Harriet Tubman, James Meredith, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, and Kamala Harris? What is it that enables some people to face adversity and go on anyhow? I'm glad you asked, it's the stuff on the inside. First John 4 and 4, greater is he. Ye shall overcome them, little children, for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm leaving you with this. God could have used stones, animals, or angels to spread his gospel, but instead he chose us. Isn't he all right? Oh, yeah, let me share this with you. Some rewards are not at this juncture in the road. Some rewards are farther down the road, so you have to keep pressing to get your blessing. I think I can press rewind one more time. You have to keep pressing to get your blessing in the all right. Watch this one. Your career is what you paid for, but your calling is what you made for. Hey, in the all right. And watch this. Never let the things you want make you forget the things you have. I said never let the things you want make you forget the things you have. Out of all the things that you don't have, you do have Jesus. And as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. I need some help right there. Isn't he all right? In the all right, in the all right, the Lord is all right. Amen. I'm not preaching, I'm just talking. Watch this. The early church leader, the early church leader, Augustine, was once accosted by a heathen or pagan or idol worshiper. And, and this idol worshiper <clears throat> showed Augustine, he grabbed Augustine and he showed Augustine his idol, his idol. He showed it to Augustine and he said to Augustine, he said, listen, here is my God. Where is thine? Augustine, where is your God? Augustine replied, I cannot show you my God not because there is no God to show you, but because you have no eyes to see him. Augustine said, God is real, but you must have the eyes to see him. In other words, what he's really saying is, God is real, but you must have the heart to see him. Yes, God is real. Oh, I can feel him. In my soul, yes, God is real, for he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is just like pure gold. God is real, for I can feel him in, us, in my soul because God is real. Our ancestors held their ground. And because God is real, no matter how rough and tough it gets, we ought not let anybody turn us around. Amen. We are mindful of our past. And we are thankful for our present. And we are hopeful for our future. We invite you to join us. Candidate for baptism, 
Christian experience, rededication, or watch care. Today would be a great day as we close out Black History Month. Today will be a great day for you to reach out, with, reach out to us, call us, email us. We would love to engage in conversation with you. We thank God for you. Lord, we praise you. We bless you. We give you the glory. Thank you, O oh God, for how you've brought us through and you've brought us out. And, O oh God, we are mindful of our past. We're thankful for our present. You've blessed us in so many ways. And we are hopeful for a bright future. We thank you one more time for this worship experience and all who participated. Thank you, God, for bringing us out of the storm. You're bringing us out of storm after storm. And we thank you. Oh, God, help your people to hold on just a little while longer in everything. We'll be all right. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory henceforth now and forevermore. And the church said, amen, my friends. When you love people, you're acting like God. Love is of God and God is love. Be blessed.